I'm Maria Schwartz along with Rachel Galligan and welcome to the Windsider Show where it's all about the W. The Dallas Wings. What's their roster situation and what are the situations they're facing? Let's dive in. If you like our show, please consider joining our Patreon community, patreon.com backslash Windsider. For less than a cup of coffee a month, you can directly show support for the hard work we do covering the W. And don't forget to see our amazing staff's written content over at windsider.com. That's windsider.com. Remember, download the episode, makes our stats look better, and allows us to continue doing this important work. Want to sponsor something regarding Windsider? Email us, info at windsider.com. All right, this is where it gets a little bit different. Right, we're moving out of of the the other teams we've done today. Yeah, we recorded a bunch of episodes in one day because we we're just feeling it. We're rolling through. Um, last episode of the day, the Dallas Wings, an interesting team that is filled with young talent, has their hands tied, um, and is just in a really tricky situation where they don't have much cap space. Really, they don't even have enough cap space to sign anyone. They don't have a roster spot even. So the question truly is. What is their situation and what are the situations that they will be facing this season? As we've done for every team, we're going to run down who their roster is. Mariah Jefferson, Alicia Gray, Isabel Harrison, Kayla Thornton, Satu Sabali, Bella Allery, Ty Harris, Marina Mabry, Arike Agumbawale, Charlie Collier, Awakuir, Chelsea Dungy, and can't even pronounce that last player's name, Luisa something... Guys, again, her hoop stats. Thank you so much for having all all of these names and the amazing salary contract stuff. But you gotta come on, give me give me these these few players uh, names. Rachel, why don't you pronounce this name? Because oh, I can't read the life of me. Geiselstadter. Yeah, that's German. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I speak Yiddish, not German. All right. Let's get into this. To be blunt, it's not going to be as long as an episode as some of these other teams because I think it's pretty clear cut. They don't have enough cap space to really bring anyone in. In fact, they don't have enough cap space to bring anyone in. Granted, they only have four secured contracts. That's kind of where the hiccup happens. You're not paying no other team that I can think of unless some trade goes down and, and things move around crazy. No one wants to pay 180 for Mariah Jefferson. No one wants to pay 160 for Izzy Harrison. Caleb Thornton at 100, fine. Alicia Gray at 164, fine. I get that. I like that. Um, Where it really gets interesting, right, is they can't make moves, but if they wanted to make a move, right, everyone, and we've talked about this, Rachel, in my mind, and I feel like you agree to a point, like, if this team had one or two more high-level vets or an experienced vet who's won it at a high level, Mm -hmm. where they really don't have... Um, this team could be good, a lot better than their record last year and their playoff experience last year indicates. Mm -hmm. The place where it gets really interesting is the choice that they have to make is they literally need to have a list of where they rank these potential, these young players and their potential, right? They have a ton of bigs. You got Izzy, you got Kayla, you got Bella, you got Charlie and a walk like and Satu. Like, what? where do you rank all these people? Because at the end of the day, there's not enough minutes in the league, in the season, to get enough to see all these players to truly, truly understand what they can do. So, on, on the flip side, right, that means that if they want to do something to bring in a vet or whatever, they're going to have to cut ties with one of these young prospects. Mm-hmm. And historically, the Wings has, have had trouble, right? And that goes that falls under Greg Bibb. They've had trouble moving on past these young players because for as long as I can remember, they've had these young talents, right? And this roster isn't built to this young talent. So what do you do? Do you cut ties to one of these young talents who, as we've seen historically, move on to success other places? Or do you just ride with it? I mean, they're pretty much stuck. Well, I mean, what do you think, Rachel? Yeah, I mean... My initial, my initial inclination was, okay, let's go get a veteran to kind of 
help balance, you know, this roster out a little bit. But the more you look at it, it's like this, this Dallas team, like anytime I saw Dallas on the schedule, like I wanted to watch them. Like I was like, you get this They're sense so of this team is so fun to watch. This team is trending upward in my opinion. I mean, you know, th- hit, hit a lull, but we, you know, we're able to finish seventh in the league last year. Um, and that's because I think there's been a concerted effort to build around this young talent. You know, I, I don't know how, you know, a year from now, um, these players fit together, but I, I almost, I almost am now switching my, my opinion on it and saying, Hey, ride out with this young roster and continue to get that experience. And, and the experience is from last year and, uh, um, make some dis- tough decisions, you know, a year from now when you're, when you're looking at how, or how are you going to frame this roster? Because, because no one's looking at Dallas as a contender this year, but I, I think that the natural progression has got to be, okay, we want to be a top five team um, and continue to, you know, work to be above 500 um, and kind of be that, that team that can be a massive problem for any team and any given night. It's just a matter of going through those growing pains and, and embracing the defensive end of the floor and all those sorts of things. Um, so I'm excited about Dallas. Like there could be no changes to this roster and I think there's still a problem. You know, so no, I, I agree. Yeah, and like part of me is like just just ride out this roster. I mean, but but you know, there are so many, and, and again, we haven't even talked about a Stu Do Falls um, buyout, which is still hitting the books. That's one hundred and eleven thousand um, dollars. That still is is you know a huge part of Dallas and and going to hinder them from making you know signing potentially that that veteran player. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I think you got to look at questions of. Who are you truly going to invest in, whether it's now or whether it's next year? Like, like, how are we feeling about Ty Harris on this team, right? How are we feeling you know, about I'm Chel- still hype. Chelsea Dungy on this team? What, what about Bella, Charlie, Awok? You know, what, what are the future with some of these players? And I don't know if those – I don't know if we have the answer to those right now. You know, I, part of me feels like those, those questions are going to be answered a little bit later, you know, a year from now. Oh, totally. I mean, I, I would have to assume that Louisa and Dungy – are the two players that you move on from if you had but realistically that frees up like 130 plus your 15 right. in cap space so you're talking like and that's for one roster spot so yeah maybe you can bring in one person if you make those moves but i agree with you i think you got to stick with it and if i saw anything and maybe i'm reading in too much to what we saw last year but it seemed like they didn't even know right they didn't know what the ranking of these young prospects was based on minutes. Mm -hmm. And obviously injuries impact that and blow away games by Mabry impacted that. And the connection of Mabry and Enrique definitely impacted that. But at the end of the day, you know, they have a lot of depth. And I think the easiest thing to do is to say Satu and Enrique are stays, right? Mm -hmm. Alicia Gray, as long as she's willing to say is a stay. And if you, believe it that way, then what I say is your focus has to be on the other positions, yeah. right? You don't need to have three people behind those people. Yeah. You don't need to have insane depth behind, you know, your stars. So you need to start thinking about who can we drop? Now, I completely agree with you, Rachel. They just need to say we're running with this roster and we're going to see how we can grow because like you said, nobody is calling this team a contender. I would be shocked. This is said, I know they call me hater yay, but like this, this is, I mean this with all love. You're not winning a finals with Mo Jeff, Izzy Harrison, and Satu, who's, you know, three seasons, four seasons into the season. So like, that's just not happening in my opinion, unless they do a crazy run like we saw from uh, Chicago this past season. So it's a team that's stuck. Yeah. Well, I, not, I mean, yeah, I, could we see, you know, some 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 roster shifts and the signing of maybe a veteran? I don't even know what position that could be. I mean, really anyone. Just if you really felt like this team needed a veteran presence that could come in and fit in, I don't know if that's the correct move. But, you know, look at the cap space for this year, just over $15,000, a.k.a. nothing. Um, compared to next year, you're, you're looking at close to $600,000. And Mo Jefferson's unrestricted free agent like I, I really think it's gonna be difficult to move her this year with a, a contract at 180 um it just seems 
a little more likely to me that we'll see more aggressive um, moves a year from now. And yeah. by that point, this this ownership, this franchise, um, will have a better understanding of some of the, some where the future lies with some of these younger players. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he, here's my thing that I'll say. Yes, it's a question of like what position would they even want. I'm going big. I'm going like a true center that can teach yeah. Awak and Charlie. Sorry, Izzy. Izzy's great, but in my mind, if if you're a championship contender team, Izzy's your backup. And I don't mean that in, in, in a bad way, but like that's just the way I view it. I mean, just looking at this, if they could get a Sylvia Fowles, this team isn't else? a contender. What are some Sylvia, other names? Mercedes Russell, um Tina Charles. Tina Charles would be ridiculous and and honestly fun to watch if they could somehow get a Liz Cambage back in there. Um, I mean, I there's yeah, that's not happening. Um, <laughs> that, but but those are like I'm talking about. Heck, even a Stephanie Dolce in there. Um, there's play like a real center who is established that they can be a down low presence. Now I know Steph Dolson wants to be more than just that, but that's what I think this team should be looking for. But um, you'd have to move one of those protect and veteran contracts and drop probably a, at least one or two. Of- well, or, or uh, now realistically you would drop Izzy Harrison so that a walk and Charlie can get, split those backup minutes. Mm-hmm. And then you'd also mm-hmm. drop a Dungy, right? So then, but realistically also, you're not going to be able to move Izzy Harrison unless you find a team who's willing to pay 160 for a backup sure. center. Yep. So, I mean, their hands are tied, and that's why I think the ultimate play when you come down to it is don't – I think many teams can make this mistake of rushing to make a move for the sake of making a move as opposed to waiting until the time is right for the team to make a move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's my final thoughts for the Dallas Wings. What about you? No, I mean, I, I think this team is on the right trajectory. Um, if you look at it as kind of a – for what for what took place the last few years with this team and like we've been talking about youth for so long like I want to like gouge my eyes out but they're on the right tra- tra- trajectory if you're if if that's truly what you're willing to you know live and die by is like this is what we're going to do um and if you did want to make a veteran move yeah maybe you play the field a little bit and see if you can get something done this year but if you don't I don't think it's the end of the world I think you're more likely to get what you want and have a better understanding of this roster next year in 2023 